Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys uh, checking today's video out, spending a little bit of time with me. It's uh, always much appreciated and grateful around here. Guys, today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you some, uh, just some quick foundational tips and advice on some things you can do to catch more and bigger bass in 2024. And what I wanted to do was sort of, sort of briefly go over, you know, winter, spring, summer, fall, and tell it and go over some techniques that you guys can try that you may or may not have tried that catch a lot of bass for me. And I um, think I think they will for you too. It seems like um, the things I'm going to go over have really been producing good, especially the last two or three years. So we're going to go over that in today's video. And I'm dragging a little bit this morning, guys. I. Uh, I didn't get home last night till 1.30 in the morning. I I'd had the Bridgeford Pro Team meeting all day yesterday in Chicago. So after that got done, I drove home. I drove up there and uh, it, I didn't, it was 520 miles. So I didn't get home until after one o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> and then I had to get up at 5.30 in the morning to get the kids ready for school. So now I just dropped them off and I'm here in the gym parking lot getting ready to go in and get my workout in. So I'm dragging a little bit uh, this morning there. And also guys, if you haven't had a chance, please uh, hit that subscribe button on the channel. If a lot of you guys out there that watch the videos aren't subscribed. And if you really like the content here, one of the best things you can do is just hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos. Okay guys, let's see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through all four seasons tell you guys a couple of quick tips that's going to help out uh you know technique wise now start out with winter time now from 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 about january until the end of february one of the things that i would highly suggest trying guys is a little finesse jerk bait this has been a great producer for me the last two winters i like that mega bass x nanahan plus one and plus two um also guys i'll put all my uh, all, all the baits i talk about i'll put in the uh uh, my tackle warehouse link in the description if you guys want to get some and use that link i apologize i don't have my lures with me but i'm here in the gym parking lot but anyway that little finesse jerk bait <coughs> excuse me <coughs> has been catching me a lot of fish the last two years and normally what i do with it is i just put it on six pound test line fish it on main lake and secondary points down steep banks anywhere that you normally fish a jerk bait but with the increased fishing pressure that we have on our lakes across the country everywhere they simply don't bite a regular or larger size jerk bait near as good anymore, especially in the winter time. Now, the larger sizes can produce a little bit better in the pre-spawn when it gets a little bit warmer out there. But in the winter time, when your water temperatures bottom out, you're gonna catch so many more fish on a finesse jerk bait. And you can still catch good ones on it. I still catch big ones on those little bitty finesse jerk baits, but uh, they have just been they bailed me out so many times the last two years. So I'd suggest either that Mega Bass X Nanahan 1 plus 1 or plus 2 or the uh, 110 plus 1 Junior, which is a smaller version. Now, springtime of the year, there's a lot of different things going on here. But first thing I want to suggest in the springtime of the year, guys, um, is a wacky rig. Wacky rig, I don't know if you guys have fished it much in the springtime of the year, but it is the number one springtime bait. It's by far will catch the biggest fish in the lake. It'll catch the most fish in the lake. One piece of advice I'll give you guys on a wacky rig is try wacky rigging some type of a shad colored worm. Now, most people use like a green pumpkin or watermelon color, but go with a shad pattern, something like a uh, salt and pepper or baby bass or something with some silver or white flake in it. I catch a lot of fish in the springtime of the year on a shad pattern, uh, you know, soft stick bait, like a Cinco or Zoom Zlinky, something like that, far more than I do the green pumpkin or watermelon. You gotta, you gotta think that probably over 90% of the dudes out there, they just, they hook on a green pumpkin or a watermelon, you know, soft stick bait and put it on a wacky rig and that's just what they fish. So try that shad pattern. It's gonna really produce, you know, <clears throat> very well for you on that deal. Another thing to try, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I think the allergy's getting over. Another thing to try uh, in the early spring uh, and right after the fish spawn, like in late spring, like, you know, say first part of May, is try the old split shot rig. Now, if you don't know what a split shot rig, all you do is get just a little eighth ounce split shot, those little split shots you can buy at Walmart or whatever that you crimp onto your, onto your line and um, put about an 18 inch, put it about 18 inches above your hook 
and put you a zoom centipede on there just like a four inch green pumpkin or watermelon centipede with just like a a one-aught ewg type hook on there it's almost like a finesse carolina rig and that little split shot rig fishing on a spinning rod with eight pound test line fishing it in and around any of those places where you think the fish are either spawning or getting close to spawn or done spawning um, works really good one of the things i like to do with it is i'll go back into the areas that I think the fish are getting ready to spawn or maybe they're spawning or, or they're done spawning and I back out deeper and say if I think the fish are spawning you know up in two or three feet of water on the bank I'll back out to eight to ten foot of water and fish deeper off those banks a lot of times those pre-spawn and those post-spawn fish will just pull off that bank a little bit and that split shot rig is just a super great way to catch them on there now, a little bit later in the spring, one of the things that's gonna work for you guys really good, like more part of mid, mid part of May, is the old chugger. You know, something like a Mega Bass Pop X or Pop R or something like that. They don't get fished much anymore, guys. A lot of people, you know, the, the, the more modern whopper ploppers and that type of stuff, the old popper um, catches a ton of fish in the month of May. And the thing that I like to fish around it is riprap banks. Get out there like early in the morning, little popper on a riprap bank great way to catch fish summertime of the year <clears throat> now we'll talk about say june july and august guys one of the top lures that a lot of people don't fish in the summertime of the year is the bluegill colored swim jig this is one of my top producers all summer out there now there's a lot of people out are fishing deep they're fishing brush piles or fishing big worms crankbaits that type of stuff Guys, almost any lake across the country, I don't care. It did, you don't have to have any grass. You can have varying water clarities, very type, varying type of cover. But if you take like a 3 8 ounce swim jig, I like that Mega Bass Uzo Swimmer, and put some type of a flapping leg trailer on it, like a Zoom Speed Craw or Rage Craw or something like that, in a bluegill pattern, dip the tips of the legs on, the, on your trailer, a little bit of shark juice in there, and go back into those same type of areas where you think the fish spawned at. And what happens is there's a percentage of those fish that live in those areas all year long in the summertime that feed on bluegill and spawning perch. You know, we talked about this on the channel before, a lot of perch will spawn all summer long. And the perch like to spawn in the same type of areas that the bass spawned, especially if you go back into those coves and you've got some shade from an overhanging tree or maybe you have some lay downs in the water like that pay close attention you'll see bluegill spawning everywhere in there all through june july and august and <clears throat> take that swim jig basically just throw it up on the bank keep your rod tip high shake it back you know fish it two or three inches underneath the water almost keeping it visible all the time that's a great way to catch them i catch fish all summer long doing that a lot of people you know sort of overlook that for some reason and the fall time of the year, <clears throat> of course, fall, you know, you got three distinct seasons. You got the early fall, mid fall, and late fall. Early fall is basically like summer, fishing's pretty tough. And then when you start to get in the mid fall, when you start to notice the significant drop in the water temperatures, that's when something else changes. The thing that you want to try in the fall time of the year is get a little finesse spinnerbait, a little small willow leaf spinnerbait, like a 3 8 ounce model, small profile. Um, I like that, <coughs> that Mega Bass SV3 spinnerbait. <coughs> it's got a fish head design on it. It's real shaddy looking at small profile, but a real small spinnerbait, small compact profile spinnerbait with a, no more than like a number three willow leaf blade. And guys burn that around fishing it fast, just under the surface. It's like once you start getting into October, like October, November, first part of December, if you have water temperatures in the 50s or 60s in the fall time of the year, that burning that little spinner bait will get you a bunch of bites and you can catch some big ones on it. I, I've, I've caught fish up to eight pounds, 13 ounces doing that in the fall time of the year. And main thing, just look for rocky banks. Rocky banks that have some wind on it. Um, if it has shade, it's even better. What if, if you gave me like one ideal scenario for that, it would be, um, fish in a rocky bank or point, a fairly steep rocky bank or point that's got some shade on it fairly early in the morning or on a cloudy rainy day. Throwing that little spinner bait out there, keeping your rod tip high and burning it, almost waking it, almost keeping 
keeping it where the blades are almost like disturbing the surface a little bit. And guys, when they hit it, they will hammer that thing. And it's, uh, it's one of the things I look forward to every fall. And one other thing in the fall, guys, that don't that, that you'll catch a bunch of fish on that doesn't get fish much anymore is a floating worm. Most people think that a floating worm is a springtime bait, which it's great in the spring. There's another window uh, that they will bite a floating worm really good in the fall time of the year once that water temperature starts getting down into the low 60s. So if you start noticing, you know, like October 1st part of November, you start to get 58, 62 degree water, just try that floating worm, fish it around any shallow water cover, stumps, laydowns, boat docks, and it will definitely get you some good bites. So anyway, guys, just a sort of a wide range and deal there. Like I said, I'll put some of those links in the description about if you want to try some of those baits and much appreciated you tuning in. We'll talk later.